Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be taking a look at the LG G Flex 2 for Sprint. If you are interested in picking this up, you can get it for $21 a month for 24 months from Sprint. You can also get it for $199 on a new 2 year contract or upgrade or you can buy for $504 outright. I'd also like to thank LG for sending this over to me for review. The G Flex 2 is LG's second take at a curved smartphone. And while it's still difficult to understand the practicality of a curved display, especially in a smartphone, the phone itself is actually quite nice. The full specs are available in the written review that's linked down below in the video's description. To me, the G Flex 2 is a very gorgeous device all around. The removable back panel is made of plastic and it can be slippery, but its thin pattern to it is something to appreciate. It looks quite nice, especially the Volcano Red model of the G Flex 2. In every photo I've seen of that model, it looks fantastic. I have the gray model, which also looks quite nice. The back panel also features LG's self-healing technology, where minor scratches can actually repair themselves to make the device almost look like new. In my testing, I didn't notice this effect whatsoever, even for extremely minor hairline scratches. This was a little bit disappointing given that this is a feature that they are promoting. The rest of the material that the phone uses is plastic, and the build quality just doesn't seem as solid as other devices using the same materials. I'm not sure if it's just because of its curved nature but I would recommend putting a case on the device. LG continues with rear buttons by putting the power and volume buttons on the back as opposed to the sides. This allows the device to be fairly slim and they are actually pretty easy to find. They are textured, which helps with that. In addition to those buttons, you'll also find the 13 megapixel rear facing camera, flash, the laser guided autofocus system, as well as the speaker. The front has your 5.5 inch full HD display, front facing camera, various sensors, while the bottom has the micro USB 2.0 port and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. The speaker isn't too bad, but like most rear facing speakers, the audio quality isn't great. I would just use this for quick speakerphone calls or very brief amounts of music listening. The earpiece on the front of the phone is fine for calls. And now let's talk about the display, and it's definitely the most standout feature of the G Flex 2. For a screen this small, I just don't understand the real reasons as to why you would want a curved display but it does look cool and I did come up with a couple of minor advantages that I think can help justify this type of display. But first let's talk about the screen itself. It's full HD, so everything is crisp and clear. The colors aren't oversaturated and they do appear to be fairly accurate. Viewing angles are also top notch and as an added bonus, the screen is actually fairly viewable in direct sunlight. So back to the curve, when I'm scrolling up and down through menus, it feels so much nicer because you can feel the curve sort of move up and down as you're scrolling. It's a little bit hard to explain, but it just feels better than using a flat screen. The curvature of the screen also allows for better pocketability. And I guess another advantage is that it's just sort of a wow factor and just because we can sort of thing. One of the disadvantages that I found is that some images and text areas can look a little bit distorted or slightly stretched, especially in landscape orientation. The G Flex 2 does run Android 5.0.1 Lollipop, with LG's own Android skin on top of that. Compared to other manufacturer overlays I've used, such as Samsung's TouchWiz and HTC's Sense UI, I'm not a big fan of LG's implementation. The icons and the color palette just don't seem that modern to me. And overall, there aren't really too many features within LG's implementation. You do have things like being able to run Windows on top of other applications and run multiple apps at once, but that's about it. Everything else is a very straightforward Android experience. Like the software, I found performance to be a bit of a mixed bag. There have been a lot of instances where doing simple things can lag a little bit or be a bit sluggish, but most of the time the performance actually seems pretty fine. Applications launched quickly and they performed well afterwards. Games ran fine as well. Like a lot of Android phones, I just think that software optimizations could help quite a bit, but there's no telling when a software update for this might actually show up. Despite having a 3000 mAh battery, I thought that the battery life could have been better. Now standby time was actually quite good, you should be able to get through the entire week if you just unplug it and leave it there. But when you actually use it, it does decrease a bit faster than I wish it would, especially if you're using 4G LTE like I was most of the time. In general, you should be able to get through the entire day on a single charge with maybe low to moderate usage and maybe a few small bursts of heavy usage. But if you do conserve how you use it, you should be able to squeeze two days of being unplugged and there is a power saving mode which decreases performance, which I would probably just leave on since it doesn't seem to decrease things too much over the normal performance speeds. 
This is a phone that features fast charging, so you're able to actually get a 50% charge in just about 40 minutes, which is very fast. The phone does get a bit warm when it's in fast charging mode, and it doesn't actually charge as fast when you're using it while it's plugged in, so it's better to leave the phone off for a little while to get the most charge. Another thing to mention is that the included wall charger actually has a bit of a coil wind to it where it'll actually put out a low volume but high pitched noise to it when it's plugged in. As soon as you unplug the phone from the charger, the noise stops. It's not that big of a deal, but it is something that's a bit noticeable. Call quality and cellular performance is just fine for the most part, in my area at least. Calls have always sounded loud and audible on both ends. Sprint's 4G LTE speeds aren't really their strong suit especially when it comes to doing raw speed tests. But when you're actually using the device for normal things such as email checks and web browsing, it's just fine for the most part, even when you're using their slower 3G network. Although there have been some instances where streaming video is a bit tough, but none of this is really to the fault of the device itself. Fortunately, I believe that the best part of the G Flex 2 has to be its camera. It takes photos fairly fast, and they look quite good afterwards, especially if you're using the auto HDR mode. The laser autofocus system certainly shines, as it does focus very quickly. When you're recording video, it doesn't seem to focus automatically, but you would rather have to actually tap the screen to have it focus wherever you want. But video quality is good as well. The actual camera app itself is extremely simple, and it doesn't really have too many advanced features. You can't even adjust the white balance or exposure yourself, but you are able to change things such as photo and video resolution and whether or not you'd like to use the timer. There's certainly a lot to like about LG's G Flex 2. It does have some disadvantages like every other smartphone, and I did find those to be relatively minor. I think that a software update could fix a lot of things, and none of the annoyances that I had are enough to actually keep you away from the device itself. I found that the design is absolutely brilliant and unique, and it does offer an average set of features on the software side of things that are enough to get what you want to do done with ease. If you have any questions or comments about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all very soon.